Hey Central Manor Kids, it's Pastor Jeremy. Welcome back to another week of our Kids Sunday School program, but on YouTube. Anyway, I'm so glad that you're here today, that you can watch this. Uh, I wish that I were with you in person, but here we are. Last week, we learned about John the Baptist and how John the Baptist pointed people to Jesus. I also ate some grasshoppers. And, consequently, a lot of you ate grasshoppers, too. I'm really starting to think we're going to be a grasshopper-eating church soon. But, John the Baptist, beyond eating grasshoppers, his most important job was to point people to Jesus Christ. And the theme verse from last week is the same theme verse as this week, which is this, John 3.30. He must increase, but I must decrease. So this week, we're going to see Jesus calling his disciples. So, if you have your Bibles, open them to Mark chapter 1. And if you don't have your Bibles, we'll run and go grab them. So, let's read our story from the Gospel of Mark, starting in chapter 1, verse 14. After John was arrested, Jesus went to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As he passed alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, Simon's brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Follow me, Jesus told them, and I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. Going on a little farther, he saw James the son of Zebedee and his brother John in a boat putting their nets in order. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Jesus went again beside the sea. The whole crowd was coming to him, and he was teaching them. Then, passing by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the toll booth. And he said to him, Follow me. And he got up and followed him. While he was reclining at the table in Levi's house, many tax collectors and sinners were eating with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who were following him. When the scribes, who were Pharisees, saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he told them, it is not those who are well who need a doctor, but those who are sick. I didn't come to call the righteous, but sinners. Jesus went up the mountain and summoned those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles to be with him, to send out to preach, and to have authority to drive out demons. He appointed the twelve. To Simon, he gave the name Peter. And to James, the son of Zebedee, and to his brother John, he gave the name Bonerges, that is, sons of thunder. Andrew, Philip, and Bartholomew, Matthew, and Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. 
Jesus called disciples to follow him. You know what I find so amazing about this story? Is that Peter and Andrew and James and John and Levi, when Jesus called them, they obeyed and they followed right away. Peter and Andrew and James and John, they gave up fishing. They gave up how they made their money. Levi gave up his job of being a tax collector, where I'm sure he was making lots of money. But they knew that following Jesus was far more valuable than all of the things that they were giving up to follow. Do you want to know what else is amazing about this story? Is that the people who followed Jesus weren't perfect people. In fact, when you read the Gospels, you can see all sorts of ways that they messed up and they made mistakes. But Jesus didn't come for perfect people. And that's one of the things that made the Pharisees so upset. Because they expected the Messiah to come and to spend time with and to take care of the people who were already righteous. Or at least who thought that they were already righteous. But here's the truth. Is that nobody is righteous outside of Jesus Christ. Jesus didn't come just to be with righteous people but he came to make sinners into righteous people. If everybody were already righteous, then Jesus would never have had to come to earth as a human being to live in a, in a perfect life, obeying God the Father, and to die a perfect death on the cross in our place. But this brings us back to our big picture question and answer, which is, why did Jesus become human? Jesus became human to obey his Father's plan and to rescue sinners. Jesus came to earth to show us what God is like and to save people from their sins. This is really, really good news. So Jesus told his disciples to tell other people about him. And we are Jesus' disciples when we trust in him. Everyone in the world needs to hear the good news about Jesus. So this week, I invited a bunch of my friends to come on and to tell you as well that they themselves are followers of Jesus. Your Sunday school teachers and your kids' church teachers, they really miss you. They would rather be at church on Sundays teaching and spending time with you and telling you the truth about Jesus and what it means to be a follower of Jesus. But... Since we can't be together for now, I invited him to join me here. We, we follow, follow Jesus. Jesus. We follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. 
Hi, everybody. I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. I will follow God. I follow Jesus. 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 We follow Jesus. Hi kids, I follow Jesus. We follow, follow Jesus. Jesus. Woo! I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. We follow Jesus. I follow Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us this week. Thank you to our Sunday school teachers for sending in their videos. I know that they miss each of you because they were so excited to do this this week. I'm sure you miss them too. But before I go, I do want to talk a little bit more about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. As we've been learning about the whole Bible, we saw that at the very beginning in the book of Genesis, God created the world and he created everything in it. And as the creator, he rules over his creation. But we also saw in Genesis 3 that the first people he ever created, Adam and Eve, chose to sin. And when they chose to sin, it ruined everything. Ever since then, all people have been born as sinners. Romans 3.23 tells us that there are not any righteous people at all. Everyone is a sinner. And Romans 6.23 tells us that the wages of sin is death. That is eternal separation from God the Father. But here's the really good news. Here's the gospel is that while we were still sinners, God loved us so much that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to live on this earth as a human being, to obey his father perfectly, and then to die on the cross to forgive us for our sins. That is the good news of the gospel. So now, we too can be followers of Jesus. Just like the disciples that we learned about followed Jesus, they obeyed him and trusted him in faith, God also offers that salvation to us. And we have the choice, as Jesus calls us to be his disciples, to respond to him to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, and to ask in faith for forgiveness of our sins. If you have questions about what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ, ask a parent or a grandparent, or call me. I would love to talk about it. It's one of the greatest decisions that we can ever make. To be a follower of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. God, we love you so much. Thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for 
the, the Bible that you have revealed yourself to us and that you have revealed your plan of salvation through your word. God, I pray for each of the boys and the girls that watch this video. I pray that you would keep them safe during this time and that you would help them to know that they need Jesus Christ as their Savior. And if they already have Jesus Christ as their Savior, I pray that you would help them to grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ as they are his followers. I pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen.